This is Kevin Patton with another study tip for human anatomy and physiology. This time I'm going to give you a shortcut to learning the bones and bone features of the vertebrate skeleton. When you start learning the anatomy of the human skeleton, it's easy to feel a bit intimidated by the list of hundreds of different bones and all their crazy names. The good news is that it's not quite as bad as it first appears. Most of those names are used for more than one bone. Like the tibia or shin bone, there are two, the left tibia and the right tibia. So that name covers two bones. And there are 24 ribs, so that shortens the list quite a bit. But still, even a shorter list of bizarre names is still a list of bizarre names. The reason the names sound so weird to us English speakers is that they're mostly borrowed from a whole different language. Not Martian, I know that's what you were thinking. As with most anatomy terms, it's Latin. So one shortcut to learning bone names quickly is to consciously recognize that you're learning a new language. By doing that, you will then think about the meaning of each bone's name instead of just thinking of it as a silly sounding word from a book by Dr. Seuss. And as you start to recognize the meanings of all the bone names, it's going to help you recall them quickly and easily. But it also means that to master your new language, you have to commit to regular short practice sessions with flashcards or other memory drills. You may not realize it, but you probably already know at least a few of the names on that big long list of skeletal features. For example, you probably already know what is meant by a skull bone. You know what a rib is. And you know what the pelvis is, right? Maybe you even know a few more than that. You may have heard the lower jawbone called the mandible, or have heard or even used terms like sternum, humerus, femur, and tibia. Now that long list of foreign terms has become just a bit shorter, at least in regard to new learning. But here's the trick. If you pay attention to the meaning of each term, it will make each term easy to remember. And if it's easy to remember, it won't take very long to learn even a humongous list of terms. So let's take a look at a few. If you know the term sternum means breastbone, then it will make sense to you, and it will be easier to remember. The same is true for the humerus, which means arm. The pelvis, which resembles a shallow bowl with a large drain at the bottom, has a name that means basin. Femur is the Latin word for thigh, and tibia is the Latin word for shin bone. But wait! Uh-oh, now I sound like I'm in an infomercial. But wait! What about that additional list of structures you need to learn? All those parts of each bone, like the supraorbital foramen or the superior orbital fissure. Don't worry. There's a shortcut for this, too. In fact, it's just a variation of the same shortcut I've been talking about all along. Pay attention to the literal meaning of each name. Specifically, I suggest that you start by learning the geographical terminology used in the names of skeletal features. Of course, you know that geography is all about the features of the Earth's land, not the features of the human skeleton. But there is something about geography that we can apply to learning skeletal features. Here's a satellite image of a part of the world to which I've taken many groups of students on field trips, the Ngoro Ngoro region of Tanzania in eastern Africa. There are many geographical features you can pick out in this image. You've seen enough geography images to know how to spot a lake or two and I'll bet you're having no problem pointing out a few craters. But what if I ask you to identify a soda lake, or a caldera, or a savanna? Those types of features may be new to you. You know that the blue areas are lakes, right? But unless you know what a soda lake is, you may not know which blue area to point to. If you know that a caldera is a type of crater formed by the collapse of a volcano, then it's easy to spot one in the image. And flat, dry grasslands like savannas will be easy to pick out, too. 
So think about our field trip to the land of the human skeleton. It doesn't have lakes or rivers or mountains or caves. It has features that are not at all familiar to most of us. Here there's a foramen, there is a fissure, and over there is a condyle. But really, what kind of feature am I looking for? A crooked blue line? No, that's a river. A bump? A hole? What exactly? If I know that a foramen is a hole, then a feature with the term foramen in its name, like the mental foramen, is relatively easy to find on an image or specimen. I can narrow it down to the holes and not even look at the bumps, cracks, and other features of a bone's terrain. If I know that a fissure is an elongated hole or crack, then finding the superior orbital fissure is not too hard at all. You can find the mandibular condyle and later recall that its name is mandibular condyle when you know that a condyle is a knuckle-like rounded bump that fits into a joint. A meatus is a tube-like opening, so the external acoustic meatus should be easy to find and remember. A ramus? That's a branching curve like a ram's horn, as in the curving ramus of the mandible. The terms you see listed along the right side here are frequently used in skeletal names. And if you know what they mean, then it makes short work of finding all the parts you need to find. And it makes short work of learning and remembering all these structures. My advice is to learn these general geographical terms first, before you start trying to tackle the individual structures of the human skeleton. If you spend just a little time drilling with these general terms, the rest of it will go much faster and much easier. Where can you find a list of the important descriptive terms and their meanings? One source is my Survival Guide for Anatomy and Physiology. You'll find a lot more shortcuts there too. Another place to look is my online web guide to Human Anatomy and Physiology where you can download a free list of these terms. For more videos, shortcuts, tips, and practical advice for learning the skeleton and other aspects of human structure and function, visit theapstudent.org and sign up for the free newsletter.